It's a good day. Welcome to my channel and I'm glad to have you back. Today, I will be demonstrating how to perform and interpret binary logistic regression analysis in XPSS. My name is Tito Ken and this is Tito Kamak Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. But before I go into the demonstrations, let me quickly give you the synopsis of today's topic. Binary logistic regression analysis is a statistical method that estimates the probability of an event occurring between categorically dichotomous dependent variable based on one or more independent variables. That means, in logistic regression analysis, the activity is to predict the probability of a case falling into a target group as a function of the predictors or independent variables in the model. So, in binary logistic regression analysis, the dependent variables must be categorical and the category must be dichotomous, hence the name binary. While the independent variables may consist of continuous and categorical variables. In the independent variables, the categorical variable can be nominal or ordinal variables. This means that the dependent variables must have exactly two groups where one group is exactly opposite the other. For example, the dependent variable can either be of the following categories, yes or no, employed or unemployed, admitted or unadmitted, tall or short, success or failure, and so on. That is, the dichotomous dependent variable must either be positive or negative, meaning Binary logistic regression analysis calculates the probability of success, which is in this example positive, such as yes, employed, admitted, tall, and success, over the probability of failure, which is negative, such as no, unemployed, unadmitted, short, and failure. On the other hand, the independent variables must consist of two or more variables that can include both continuous, ordinal, and nominal variables. Basically, binary logistic regression analysis can be applicable to many areas of decision making. For example, if a university wants to decide the admissions of students into the school new academic section, the university may want to look at some admission criteria to help decide whether to admit or not to admit a student. The admissions criteria may include the following qualification. 1. Jump score in the case of Nigeria. 2. Number of O-level subject passed. 3. Gender. 4. Age. 5. Catchment area. 6. Religion and sometimes seven admissions test score. Now, based on this scenario, the dependent variable will be admission, consisting of admit or not admit, as dichotomous categories or groups in the dependent variable, and this will be coded as one and zero, with emphasis on the one as the case may be. The independent variable will be 1. Jump score, which is a continuous variable, 2. Number of O-level subject passed, which is a continuous variable, 3. Gender, which is categorical variable, 4. Age, which is a continuous variable, 5. Catchment area, which is a categorical variable, 6. Religion, which is a categorical variable, and seven admissions test, which is a continuous variable. As you can see, the independent variables consist of both continuous and categorical variables, and this is typical about binary logistic regression analysis. So, using this information, the university system can conduct admissions process by running binary logistic regression analysis which in turn will guide the admissions officer on who to admit and the most contributing qualification to consider for the admissions process. Statistically, the objective of conducting binary logistic regression analysis is to find the best fitting or simplest model that enable us 
to understand the relationship between the dependent and the independent variables so that we are able to reach appropriate statistical conclusions for better decision. Another scenario where binary logistic regression analysis can be applicable is the health sector. With the independent variables such as age, gender, and blood pressure, a doctor may want to determine whether a patient is yes hypertensive or no not hypertensive. We shall explore this health scenario in our demonstration in this video in just a moment. However, to perform binary logistic regression analysis, the following assumptions must be made by your data sets. 1. The dependent variable should be categorical and measured on a dichotomous scale. 2. There should be one or more independent variables, which can be either continuous or categorical variables. The continuous variable should be measured on interval or ratio scale, while the categorical variable should be measured on ordinal or nominal scale. 3. Your data should have independence of observations, and your dichotomous dependent variable should have mutually exclusive and exhaustive categories. 4. If your independent variable contains continuous variable, there should be a linear relationship between the continuous variable and the logit transformation of the dependent variable. 5. There should be no multicollinearity among your independent variables. And 6. There should be no significant outliers in your data sets. Please note that it is important to ensure that your data set meets the requirement as listed in assumptions 1 to 6. However, in a different video, I shall demonstrate how to test for binary logistic regression assumptions. Please kindly subscribe to receive the notification. Now let's go into XPSS to demonstrate how to perform binary logistic regression analysis using the head scenario as our case study. This is our set of fictitious data already loaded into XPSS for the demonstration, and the data set consists of 120 respondents, including male and female gender, of different age and with different blood pressure, who answered yes or no when asked if they have hypertension. Their responses have been coded as appropriate. This data has been tested for all the assumptions and it has been found tenable. If you want to learn how to load data into XPSS or learn how to code categorical variables as appropriate, please kindly see my video on Introduction to XPSS Software for Beginners, Part 1. Now, with this data set, we want to determine whether hypertension can be estimated based on gender, age of the person or on the person's blood pressure. In this table of data, hypertension is a dependent variable consisting of dichotomous categorical group, yes or no, coded as 1 for yes and 0 for no respectively. Gender, age and blood pressure are the independent variables. The gender is categorically male and female, while the age and the blood pressure are continuous variable each. Now, to perform binary logistic regression analysis, go to the menu bar and click on Analyze. From the sub-menu, put your cursor on Regression. And from the drop-down options, click on Binary Logistic to open the Logistic Regression dialog box, as you can see. In this dialog box, Ensure that the method of analysis is ENTER, which is the XPSS notation for regression analysis. In this dialog box, our dependent and independent variables are in the box on the left. Click on the dependent variable, hypertensive patient, and then click on the transfer arrow key to move it to the dependent box on the right. Then, hold down the control key on the keyboard and click on the remaining variables, gender, age of patients, and blood pressure. And then click on this transfer arrow key to transfer them to the covariate list box on the right. At this point, you can go ahead and click OK, 
and the results of the binary logistic regression analysis will be produced with the necessary output. But for sincerity of purpose and assurance, there is need to include more features. Now, click on the categorical button. This opens a dialog box where you are required to define your categorical covariate variables. Among my independent variables here, there is only one categorical covariate, which is gender. So click on gender and then click on the transfer arrow key to move it to the categorical covariate box on the right. Now, in the change contrast area, change the reference category from the last option to the first option. Then click on the change button to effect the new change. Please note that the choice of last or first reference category entirely depends on how you set up your dataset and which group or category in your variable you have preference or reference to. Then click continue to close this dialog box. Now click the options button to open the logistic regression options dialog box. In this dialog box, ensure the box for include constant in model is checked by default. And if it's not checked by default, then check the boss now. Now check the boss for horseman and let me show goodness of fit. This selection will provide another statistical output to test the goodness of fit of the logistic regression model from a different dimension. Then check the boss for confidence interval for exponential b and ensure that it is set at 95%. This selection will produce the lower and upper limits of the odds ratio or the probability change of the model outcome based on a unit change in the predictor. Now click continue to close this dialog box. The next button here is save. Click to open the dialog box. This is where you can do a lot of things, especially to test for the binary logistic regression assumptions. But since I will not be testing the assumptions for binary logistic regression in this video, I will not select or check any option here. So let's cancel this dialog box. Now leave all other options unchanged. Then click the OK button to produce the binary logistic regression analysis results in the output window. Now the results have been produced, which include information such as case processing summary, dependent variable encoding, and categorical variables codings. Others are block zero, the beginning block, which is the output when no predictors are included in the regression model, and block one, method equals enter, which is the regression block which produce the model output when all the predictors are included in the regression model. Now, I will interpret this result step by step. Table one, the case processing summary. This table shows the total number of respondents and the total number of missing data or cases. As you can see, we have 120 respondents and there is no missing data. Table two, Dependent variable encoding. This table shows how the cases in the dependent variable were coded. As you can see, respondents who said they don't have hypertension were coded as zero. And why the respondent who said they have hypertension were coded as one? Here, the preference choice is one, which is yes. And the idea is to see the factors that can affect the choice of yes, which equally corresponded to male. Table 3, Categorical Variables Codings. This table shows how the categorical variables among the independent variables were coded. As you can see in the last column, female was coded as zero, while male was coded as one. The importance of this table is in the fact that it also produces the frequency showing the counts of each of the categorical case or group. As you can see here, out of 120 respondents, female is 72 in number, while male is 48 in number. 
block 0, the beginning block. This block of output consists of classification table, variables in the equation, and variables not in the equation. They describe results of the analysis when none of the independent variables or predictor variables was included in the logistic regression analysis. This block of output only serves as a baseline for comparison between when the independent variables are not included in the logistic regression analysis and when the independent variables or the predictor variables are included in the logistic regression analysis. As you can see, there is no reasonable statistical information that describes specificity and sensitivity of the model in this classification table. So, there will be no need to discuss this block of output as there are no predictors in the model. Now, let's proceed to block 1. Block 1, method equals enter. This block of output consists of the results of the logistic regression analysis when the independent variables or predictor variables are included in the logistic regression analysis. When you compare this block 1 with the block 0, you will see that there is a great improvement in the model because the independent variables which are the predictors have been included in the logistic regression analysis. The output tables in this block consist of omnibus test of model coefficients, model summary, Hosmer and Lemichaux tests, contingency table for Hosmer and Lemichaux tests, classification table, and variables in the equation. Now I will discuss these output one by one. The omnibus test of model coefficients. This test produces a chi-square statistic of goodness of fit, which helps to determine whether the model adequately describes the data or not. Accordingly, if the p-value is less than 0.05, then the model is statistically significant and therefore shows goodness of fit, meaning the model adequately describes the data. So as you can see, the p-value under xig column are 0 0.000, which means the p-value is less than 0 0.05. This means that the model is significant and adequately describes the data. Hence, the chi-square test indicates that the model is a significant improvement in fits. The model summary table. The model summary table describes the variance in the dependent variable that is explained by the model or the independent variables. This is equivalent to the coefficient of determination in regression analysis designated as arrow square. But in binary logistic regression, the explained variance is calculated using Kos and Snell arrow square and Nagekaki arrow square. But because Kos and Snell arrow square cannot achieve maximum value up to 1, Nagekaki arrow square is introduced as adjustment of cost and snare arrow square with value that ranges from 0 to 1. And this makes Nagekaki arrow square as a preferred calculation for variance explained in logistic regression. However, the result that is usually displayed in this model summary table are pseudo arrow square, which does not technically explain the variation but are used as approximate variation in the criterion variable. However, in this summary table, the Nagekaki arrow square is 0 0.909, and when we multiply this value by 100%, it will mean that the variance explained in the dependent variable based on our model is 90.9%. But if you choose to also report the cost and snell arrow square, then the variance explained in the dependent variable will be 68.1%. But generally, we can say that the variance explained by the model ranges from 68.1% to 90.9%. That is, if we are looking or considering cost and snell arrow square and Nagekaki arrow square simultaneously. Now, 
Let's proceed to the next table. Hussman and Lemichaux's test. This test also produces chi-square statistic of goodness of fit, which helps to determine whether the model adequately describes the data or not. But unlike the omnibus test of model coefficient, the p-value of Hussman and Lemichaux's test must be greater than 0.05 for the model to adequately describe the data or have a good model fit. That is, for binary logistic regression, the Hussmann and Lemichaud test must not be statistically significant. If, however, the p-value of Hussmann and Lemichaud test is less than 0.05, as in the case of omnibus test of model coefficient, it will mean that the predictors are not able to describe the dependent outcome adequately. So, as you can see from our table, the p-value under SIG column is 0.672, and this value is greater than 0.05. Therefore, based on the Hussmann and Lemistros test, the model has a good fit and therefore adequately describes the dependent outcome. Because Hussmann and Lemistros test is not statistically significant, there will be no difference between the observed and predicted model in the contingency table for Hussmann and Lemichaud's test. Now, let's move to the next table so that you can see what I meant by there will be no difference. The contingency table for Hussmann and Lemichaud's test. This table presents the observed and the expected values for the dependent variable cases, no and yes. As you can see in this table, the observed and the expected values are in most cases the same and the values are approximately equal to each other. This is what you should expect to see if the chi-squared test results of Hussmann and Lemichaud test is greater than 0.05, except otherwise. The similarity of values in this table is also an indication that the model adequately fits the data. But if there are substantial differences between the observed and the expected value, it means that the model is misspecified and does not fit, and so does not adequately you know, describe the data. And I hope you follow. Now, let's move to the next table. The classification table. This table is particularly important because it provides the assessment which shows how well the predictors or model is able to estimate or predict the correct category of the dependent output when the independent variables are included in the logistic regression analysis or in the logistic regression model. Recall that the outputs we had in block 0 include the classification table which did not provide us with any useful information. Now, if you compare this table with that table in block 0, you will see useful statistical information are not given to both dependent categories in this table. This shows that there is improvement in the model when the predictor variables are included in the analysis. That is, when the independent variables are not included in the logistic regression analysis. Here in this table, the model has indicated 93.3% accuracy in classification, which can be referred to as 93.3 PAC. Specifically, this table presents accurate information on the degree of percentage assurance to which observed outcomes are estimated or predicted by the model. However, the beauty of this table is that it provides two basic features that help to give assurance to the outcome of the model, especially as regards to predicting group membership on the dependent variable. These features are 1. Specificity and 2. Sensitivity. Now, let me explain them one after another. Specificity. Specificity refers to the percentage of cases that are correctly predicted by the model that will not choose the target category in the dependent variable. Let me say it again. Specificity refers to the percentage of cases that are correctly predicted by the model 
that will not choose the target category in the dependent variable. As you have seen in this demonstration, the target category or the reference group in the dependent variable is yes, which implies that all the predictor variables such as gender, age, and blood pressure can affect hypertension. So, by specificity, this table correctly showed that 92.9%, which accounted for 52 number of respondents, did not say yes, but no. Honestly, this percentage number for specificity is high in this demonstration. On the other hand, sensitivity refers to the percentage of cases that are correctly predicted by the model that we choose the target category in the dependent variable. As you can see in this table, 93.8%, which accounted for 60 respondents, was actually predicted by the model. Generally, this table indicates that for this model, the specificity is 92.9%, while the sensitivity is 93.8%. But overall, the accuracy of the model is 93.3%, and this is very good. Based on these two features, we can say that the model exhibits good sensitivity since among the respondents who we choose yes over no, 93.8% was correctly predicted to choose yes. And they also had greater number of respondents. Now let's move to the next table. Our next table is variables in the equation. This table shows the relationship between the predictors and the outcome, and it makes provisions that indicate the independent variables that have got the significant impact or contribution to the choice of the target group, which is yes, in the dependent variable. In this table, the independent variables, which are the predictors, are listed in column 1. In column 2, we have the slope, or the regression coefficients, or the beta, designated as B, which is the predicted change in the log odds. The beta coefficients can be negative, as you can see in the case of gender and blood pressure, indicating negative slope, or positive, as you can see in the case of age, indicating positive slope. In column 3, we have the standard error, involved in the computation of the statistical significance. In column 4, we have world, which is the test statistic that is used to estimate the statistical significance of the parameters following a chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom of 1 as presented in column 5. Column 6 indicates the p-value or the statistical significant level of the parameters, designated as xig. Why column 7? consists of the odds ratio, designated as exponential b, which is the ratio of probability of event occurring or not. So for one unit change in predictor, there is exponential change in the probability of the outcome, recorded in the exponential b column. Correspondingly, if the predictor has a negative unit change, the odds ratio will be small in value. But if the predictor has a positive unit change, the odds ratio will be big in value. Basically, each odds in this table indicates the multiplicative change in the odds of a case falling into a target group per unit increase on a given predictor. The last two columns contains the 95% confidence interval for the odds ratio. However, to understand the provisions in this table, there are some indices about odds ratio you should know. 1. If the odds ratio is equal to 1, then the probability of the model in falling into the target group, such as yes, is equal to the probability of falling into the non-target group, such as no. 2. If the odds ratio is greater than 1, then there is probability of event occurring. This means that the probability of the model in falling into the target group, which is yes, is greater than the probability of falling into the non-target group, which is no. So the event 
is likely to occur. 3. If the odds ratio is less than 1, then the probability of event occurring will decrease. This means that the probability of the model in falling into the target group, which is yes, is less than the probability of falling into the non-target group, which is no. So the event is unlikely to occur. As you can see from this table, the odds ratio of age is 2.173, and this value is greater than odds ratio of 1. Therefore, there is the probability of event occurring. So we can say that the odds of respondent with choice of yes that age can affect hypertension is 2.173 times higher than the choices of gender and people with blood pressure. The 95% confidence interval of these odds increases from 1.325 to 3.565, and this is expected because of the positive unit change in the predictor. On the other hand, the odds ratio of gender and blood pressure is 0 0.006 and 0 0.732 respectively, and they are less than odds ratio of 1. This means there is unlikelihood for event to occur using the variables because the odds of respondent with choice of no that gender and blood pressure cannot affect hypertension is 0 0.006 and 0 0.732 times lower than the choice of age respectively. This is also evident in their 95% confidence interval. As you can see, the lower and upper level cross zero. Generally, for one unit change in the predictor in the B column, there is corresponding change in the probability of the outcome in the exponential B column. What do I mean? I'll tell you. Now, since the predictors, gender and blood pressure have negative unit changes in the B column, there will be corresponding decrease in the probability of the outcome in the exponential B column. So as you can see, at a unit increase in the predictor gender, the probability of the outcome decreases by minus 5.053. Hence, the odds ratio is 0 0.006, with 95% confidence interval ranging from 0 0.000 to 0.869. Similarly, at a unit increase in the predictor blood pressure, the probability of the outcome decreases by minus 0.311. Hence, the odds ratio is 0.732 with 95% confidence interval ranging from 0.523 to 1.026. But when you look at their p-values under the XIG column, you can see that gender has p-value of 0.044 age has p-value of 0 0.002, while blood pressure has p-value of 0 0.070. As you can see, the gender and age are statistically significant because their p-values are less than 0 0.05, while the blood pressure is not statistically significant because the p-value is greater than 0 0.05. Then we can conveniently say that the independent variables or the predictor variables that have got the significant contribution to the target group, which is yes, in the model at gender and age. The contribution from the blood pressure variable to the target group, yes, was not statistically significant. This is how to perform binary logistic regression analysis in XPSS, and I also hope you were able to follow the interpretations. I hope this video was useful to you because right now we have come to the end of this video and I hope you will be able to replicate the procedure as demonstrated in this video to perform binary logistic regression analysis in XPSS for your own data sets. If you like this video and you want to see more video contents like this, please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel to encourage education and learning and so that we begin to send you notification every time I publish new and useful content. Subscription is free. Thanks for your time and subscription and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.